We're going to jump into our next presentation here about life paths. And I think a big part of making decisions, whether that be program development or admissions marketing campaigns, um, is having a quantifiable labor market data. And so I think when we hear the term labor market, we think of things like supply chains and demand, um, and GDP, GDP, maybe we think of socioeconomic trends. Um, but for those of us in education, I think it helps us know what's needed and what's relevant in an ever-changing workforce. So um, that being said, for those um, who have earned credentials, um, it helps us know what our students are doing with those credentials after they graduate. And then using those stories to be able to share them with incoming students and their support systems, but then also helping students who are getting close to graduating build their network with alumni. Um, maybe looking at building networks so they can get a job afterwards in a place that somebody else already works. So that being said, I'm really excited for our next presenter. Uh, Janet Kohler, she is the Director of Career Services here at ECSU, and she is one of the people within the North Dakota University system who has access to this job market data. And so um, I'm going to turn it over to you, Janet. Thank you so much for attending summer after the conference, and so to just jump right in, can you explain to those of us who don't know what LifeCast is and what is it? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Shannon, for the introduction. Like she said, my name is Janet Kohler, and I'm the Director for Career Services here, and one of my many roles on campus is to um, have access to and share labor market information with our academic, academic departments and our marketing team as well. Um, so LifeCast is a large um, database and system that goes out and scrapes the web essentially for job postings, for public profiles, and it also uses government data like census information to provide this information to colleges, universities, and tech com companies, excuse me, really any company that serves learners. And so Lightcast provides data and analytics to help educators optimize their program offerings, connect students to programs and careers, and communicate outcomes and impact. So today, during this session, we're going to be looking at some tools in the form of reports um, that will help you on your campus do the following. Um, create and maintain relevant programs, market programs and drive enrollment, retain and support current students, track employment outcomes, and demonstrate your institution's value to its community and to society as a whole. Lightcast started out as two separate companies, actually, and maybe some of you have used or are familiar with Burning Glass. I know that VCSU used to use Burning Glass um, just a few years ago. So Burning Glass and NZ merged in 2021, and at that point, they called themselves NZ Burning Glass. In 2022, they decided to do a complete rebrand, and now they are called Lightcast. Um, so they took decades of content, of knowledge, and of experience from these two entities and combined them into one. So Lightcast is extremely powerful in providing this information for our institutions and essentially for our learners. Okay, so I have a question. Yes. Um, and I know this is going to lead into your next point, but. Um, to create and maintain relevant programs, can you first show us how Lightcast looked at regional job demands, like specifically for North Dakota, uh, or even looking at another state that students might be interested in going to once they graduate? And then the second part is, can you show us how Lightcast helped the campus find out if other schools are offering the credential that they're thinking of creating to kind of figure out the competition that's out there? Absolutely. So we're going to start out by looking at what's called the Economy Overview Report. And this is the bulkiest of the reports we're going to look at. I'll just warn you, there's a lot of information. And that's because it provides a comprehensive scan of a region's economy. So why that would be important to higher ed is we can see the historic trends and the future trends of population, of our GDP, of employment, of unemployment, of job growth, job decline, all of these factors that will in turn affect us in higher ed. 
So I'm going to, how this will work is I will pull up the report itself. I'm going to show you how it's run. Um, just as a reference, I guess, there is at least one person on each of your campuses that has access to Lightcast and can use this information and can compile these reports. Um, so you yourself will likely not be responsible for creating these, um, but it sometimes helps to see kind of the story of how it is created. So we're going to start by looking at this economy overview. And I'm just going to focus on North Dakota, since that relates to all of us. You can do a variety of states. You can do a, you know, from the Moorhead area. You can do the entire United States. But I think North Dakota is a great starting point. So if I run this, if you were to request something like this from your Lightcast user on campus, you would end up getting a PDF of this same exact report. I'm just showing you the web version. So in this economy overview, we're able to see our population as a region, in this case, all of North Dakota. And we can see that we grew by over 25,000 in the last five years, and we are projected to continue to grow over the next five years. Our employment has decreased slightly over the last five years, but I would assume that any region you look at is going to show a decrease because of the pandemic. Um, we are expected to grow quite largely, almost 26,000 in employment um, over the next five years. And we can also see the median household income. There are some key takeaways here, and the one that I really like to point out to you, because it affects or it relates to all of us, is this educational attainment piece. So 22.6% of North Dakota residents possess a bachelor's degree, and that's just above the national average, while 14.3% of North Dakota residents hold an associate's degree, which is actually five and a half percent above the national average. Now I'm gonna show you a graph a little bit later that will put that into more perspective for you. So just hold tight to that information. Um, this is giving us just some breakdown of our population, how many are in the labor force, and then our jobs. So notice our labor force and our jobs are not equal. And that's because Jobs is talking about all of the pieces of employment that one person might have. So we know that some people work multiple jobs, so that's where this number comes from. We can see our labor force breakdown in terms of employed, our unemployed, our entire labor force, our residents that are not in the labor force. And what I really like about Lightcast is it provides a lot of visual data, but gives you the opportunity to dig deeper on almost everything. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So the educational attainment piece is showing um, what sort of education our North Dakota residents have. So you'll notice that most, or not most, but the largest percentage comes from those with high school diplomas. Following bachelor's degree at 22.6%, and then some colleges in third place there. We can break down our unemployment by certain demographics, like unemployment by age, unemployment by gender, unemployment by race, and unemployment by ethnicity. This particular line chart is going to show us both historic and projected trends in the areas of population, of jobs, of our labor force, and our unemployment. So as you can see here, our population in North Dakota has been on a steady increase now, um, and we are continuing to increase according to Lightcast's projections. Our jobs in North Dakota, notice we took quite a dip in 2020, and like I said earlier, you're going to see that across the board with any region you look at. According to Lightcast's data, we are going to reach pre-pandemic job levels in 2024, so it's coming soon, and then we're going to steadily increase. We can track our labor force over the last five years. And we can also track our unemployment rates over the last five years. Zoom out a little so you can see a little bit better here. So this 
these charts, these visuals, are going to show us where North Dakota sits in relation to the U.S., the national average, as far as how many millennials we have, how many are retiring soon, veterans, violent crime, property crime, and racial diversity. So notice we are sitting about at the national average of all of these areas, except for racial diversity. This might be helpful in seeing that we have a large number of those that are retiring soon. So that tells us that we're going to need to build up um, that workforce. This map I find interesting. It shows the number of commuters per county in North Dakota. So as you can see, and it probably doesn't surprise you, but Cass County has the most number of commuters that are driving from other counties to work in Cass County. Um, whereas if you look at Morton County, they're actually losing many residents to go work elsewhere in different counties. This is called a Sankey diagram, and this shows us where we are gaining population from and where we are losing population to. So if you see this blue vertical line in the middle, that's North Dakota. Clay County we're gaining quite a few residents that previously lived in Clay County, so just across the border, um, but we're actually losing more to Clay County. Same with Hennepin County. We're gaining some, but we're losing more to the Minneapolis area. And same with Maricopa County in Arizona. That maybe could be attributed to snowbirds and those that head south when it's cold. Um, but if you look down here, we do have a few counties that we are gaining population from, but they're actually staying here. So Yellowstone in Montana, Ramsey in Minnesota, and El Paso in Colorado, we are gaining population from those counties, but they are sticking around North Dakota. Could be helpful in marketing purposes as you're um, looking for prospective students. This industry characteristics could definitely come in handy as you are planning for um, maybe new programs on your campus. And this is showing what industries are most popular, um, most widely employing in North Dakota. So our largest industry is government. And if you, sorry, if you can see here, the national average is this little gray bar. I'm not sure if you can see that from your seat. Um, but notice we are quite above the national average in government jobs. Healthcare and social assistance is in second. We're going to see a lot of healthcare jobs um, towards the top of these top of these visuals. Healthcare and social assistance is our largest industry growth area. And then this is the employment concentration piece. So this is showing which areas, which industries does North Dakota have a unique advantage to hosting in our state. So it probably won't surprise you that oil and gas extraction, agriculture, fishing and hunting, those sorts of jobs, we have a unique advantage because of our natural resources. And so we're able to house a lot of those jobs here in North Dakota. Like I said earlier, what's nice about this report and all of these reports is you can actually see more detailed data if you choose to. So yes, this visual is nice. It gives you the start of a picture. But if I open up the detailed data, I can actually see the change in jobs over the last five years. So this is going to tell me, I'm gonna pick out the big percents here. Over the last five years, there has been a 36% increase in North Dakota with arts, entertainment, and recreation jobs. It's a huge increase. Um, I can also look down here and see that we have seen a pretty massive decrease in the area of management of companies and enterprises at 21%. So if you're looking for those specific numbers and percents, those are available to you. You just have to dig a little deeper. We can see what companies are employing our residents, Wells Fargo being number one. And we can see the characteristics of our workforce. So where is our workforce? Um, they are sitting below the national average, but um, our top workforce occupation is the office and administrative support area. You can see the largest growth, employment concentration, and where our employees are making the most earnings, which would be architecture and engineering. 
This is that piece that I told you to hang on to that associate's degree information for later. Um, this is showing the gaps between what our residents have for an education and what is actually needed in our state. So the one I like to pick out here is associate's degree. Only 2% of jobs require an associate's degree in North Dakota, yet 14.6% of North Dakota residents have an associate's degree. So if you look at this, you can kind of see that gap, and that might pull you into some helpful information for your own campus. The educational pipeline piece shows us how many graduates came out of each of our schools and in what degree level. So UND and NDSU are just neck and neck um, in first and second place there with the respective um, degree levels coming out of each. And in-demand skills. So nursing is our number one skill that's needed in North Dakota, and we are going to look a little bit more in depth on in-demand skills in our next report. Okay, so to the second piece of that, and like I warned you, that is the bulkiest of all reports. Not everyone is going to be quite that extensive. Um, but Shannon also asked about comparing your institution with other institutions and what they're offering versus what you're offering. Um, so the, the report that we can use for that is called the Program Overview Report. And not only can you compare your institution with others, you can also use it to find gaps in the market. You can use it to find in-demand skills for certain program areas. and. What we use this at ECSU for a lot is marketing purposes. Um, our marketing team will request these reports and then they pull out the statistics and the information that would be good to share with prospective students. So it can be used on an academic level, but also for um, promotion pieces as well. If you've ever gone through the NDUS new program development process, this is a required report. So it provides that real evidence that can be shown in that a program is a new viable option for your campus. And it's a great way to look at your existing programs as well. Um, there is a second report to this called the PDR, the Program Development and Review. This just gets a little more specific. Um, we are simply going to focus on the program overview because I think it's a really good starting point and it's required for the new program development process. Okay, so I'm just going to plug in a zip code. And if you're not familiar with zip codes, zip codes are those two, four, or six digit codes that indicate the program um, on your campus. And I'm going with the six digit code for business administration and management, mainly because it's such a large program that is virtually at most campuses. And I'm going to select just North Dakota. So we can see North Dakota schools and how we compare across the state in this particular program. So across North Dakota, there are 17 institutions that offer the Business Administration and Management Program. And over the last, or in the last year of 2021, there were 761 completions in those 17 institutions. We've seen a 42% growth in four years. This visual breaks it down by distance offered versus non-distance offered programs. So this is something that in the new program development process might be very beneficial to know who is offering distance and who's not. And can we use that to our advantage? So it's looking like 75% of these programs were offered by distance, or at least the institution had the option of distance. Our market share, most of these graduates are coming out of public four-year schools. And then we can look at all of the institutions that offer this particular program and see how many completions they had. Lightcast only has iPads information up through 2021 right now. By the end of the summer, they should have through 2022. Um, so we can see the number of completions, we can see the growth, the market share, the iPads, tuition, and fees, and then the trend of completions. Within this, you can also see 
I'm looking at NDSU right now. I can see from 2007 to 2021 how many completions we have in that particular program. So like I said, the visuals are nice, but if you need that specific data, it's available to you. Most of these graduates are leaving with a bachelor's degree, some with a master's degree. And then this is where we really want to um, kind of shift gears and think about the jobs. So we've done a lot of talking about the program, but now let's talk about the jobs. So when you see the word occupation, I want you to think of an umbrella. And under that umbrella are all of the job titles that fall under it. Um, so an occupation might be general and operations managers, but there are many, many job titles that would fall under that occupation. So as of 2018, there were over 44,000 jobs that would fit within this business administra administration program. Um, and we see a 16% change from 2018 to 2028. So they're projecting growth in this area. We can also see the median earnings, which might be helpful to share with prospective students. This section is kind of in my wheelhouse as I deal a lot with careers, but the job postings overview is showing how many job postings related to this program um, in North Dakota. And so there were almost 19,000 unique postings that would fall under that business administration program area with over 2,000 employers that were competing for that talent. The top companies posting, of course, you may see these staffing companies right up at the top because that's their role is to hire as a third party. Um, that's Fury on Staffing, Mana, Dollar General, Walmart. Those are the top companies that are posting and looking for these specific candidates. You can see our top posted job titles. And then this is probably my favorite section because I, I do deal specifically with students who are looking to gain skills in certain areas. Um, so in this section, we can see the specialized, the common, and the software skills that are needed in this particular field. Notice that job postings are looking for people with Microsoft Office experience, but not every candidate is listing that in your public profile. So we see that gap. I look at common skills. Many job postings are looking for candidates with communication skills. I think that's kind of a given. But only 5% of candidates are listing that in their public profile. So those are those key things that would be important to share with students. This is especially important in those fields, like tech fields, that are constantly changing the programs they use, the software they use, the systems they use because you can then share with your academic departments what skills, what software skills are needed right now in order to become best prepared for that field. So that was the program overview. So when an admissions counselor meets with the students and their support system, and that support system says, okay, well, what kind of jobs can they get with this major or program or degree? Or what kind of salary could they be expecting after they graduate? Is there a way that like cast can kind of illustrate that better? Yes. This one? Okay. So to track an institution's employment outcomes, we can use the profile analytics report. And what this is going to do What this is going to do is show us where our graduates are at and what they're doing as far as employment goes. So I'm just going to stick with the United States. And do we want to use a specific school? Plug in the UID. So like I said, the Lightcast, one of their ways of getting information is they are going out there and scraping the web for those public profiles. So if you have a LinkedIn profile or you're on Indeed or any way that you're sharing your name and your employment and maybe where you graduated, that's what Lightcast is picking up. 
So of course it's not every single graduate because not every single graduate is using those things and they're not maybe public. Um, but we can see that UND has over 64,000 profiles that would fall under that public category. And we can see that they are mainly located in North Dakota and Minnesota, but we also see dots in Washington, Arizona, over on the East Coast, in Chicago, in Colorado. And so this is telling us not specifically where each graduate is at, but gives us an idea of kind of where they're ending up. Most of our profiles, or many of our profiles, I should say, are coming from Minneapolis, the Grand Forks following shortly. And you can actually look at specific profiles. We're only going to pull a few of them, um, but you can see specific profiles of UNB graduates that are located somewhere within the United States here. Our top companies of UND graduates, UND is actually employing many of their own graduates, and you actually see this across the board. What we find that usually the institution itself is the top one or two employer of its graduates. Stanford Health following right behind. You can see the top occupations of these profiles, the top job titles of these profiles, and the top schools. So of course, all of these graduates went to UND, but some also went on to NDSU, the U of M, MSUM. So maybe they went on to get a certificate or maybe they went on to get a, the next degree level. The top program coming out of UND is the Business Administrative Administration Management and Operations with 13.7%. And now remember, this is just those public profiles, so it's not every single graduate. Top specialized skills, marketing and project management. And you can see um, the top common skills and the top qualifications of these graduates as well. Okay, so let's say that you've got a current student and their dream job is they want to be a nurse at Stanford. Okay. Can you show us how Life Pass might be able to help that student kind of customize their education and maybe what courses they want to focus on in order to get to that goal? Yes, absolutely. So first off, there are reports that can help with this and many of those reports are ones that we have looked at already. Almost everything we've looked at could be help could help to retain and to support current students as they gain more skills, gain the right skills, and enter the workforce. But one specifically that um, Shannon touched on was the company talent profile. And so with this, it's kind of like the economy overview, except you are looking at one specific company. So since Shannon gave the example of Stanford, I'm just going to go with that. And you can sort by occupation as well, but we're just going to get a very broad picture of Stanford and what's going on within that specific company. So you can see another map we have here. This is where the majority of those Stanford locations or Stanford employees are at, many being in Fargo, Sioux Falls, and Bismarck. We can see that registered nurses take up most of these profiles that we're finding from Stanford Online, with over 2,600. We can also see their median hourly earnings. So this might be especially helpful if you are working with a student who's interested in becoming a registered nurse and specifically at Stanford, you can show them the median hourly earnings. And then you could compare it to another company and see their thoughts. This is another Sankey diagram. So we looked at one of these when we were talking about North Dakota's population. This one is looking at Sanford. So Sanford is that little blue line. And we show the previous employer and the following employer. So where are our employees coming from before they get to Sanford? And then where are they going? So the Good Samaritan Society, we're gaining many from the Good Samaritan Society. And not many are leaving from Sanford. 
Avera Health, we see almost equal. Um, we're gaining many employees from Avera Health, but we're also losing about the same amount of employees from Avera Health. Essentia, we're gaining some, and we're losing a little bit more to Essentia Health. So this might be helpful to sit down with a student and show them, well, this is their competitor, and obviously they have employees leaving for that competitor. So what does their competitor have that they don't? Um, so just to kind of give them some more options, if they're dead set on a company, giving them more options is never um, harmful. This shows the jobs that they're posting for. And you can follow each to show over the last 14 months what has the trend been. Of course, healthcare practitioners and technical jobs are the top, and they seem to be remaining at the top. However, there are, there are some, like management, that kind of fluctuates. So they are hiring for a while, and then they taper off, and then they hire again. So you could spend lots of time looking through all of these and figuring out what jobs are useful and being hired for at Sanford. The skills that Sanford is looking for set up in the same way. Of course, nursing skills are number one and seem to be remaining number one. Um, patient education and counseling, they started in March of 2022 with 680 postings and now are sitting at over 1,200 postings. Who is competing for the same talent? So applicants are also applying for jobs at these companies, ProMedica, um, we have these that we recognize, Advent Health, Ascension, and we see um, their competitors, and so this would be helpful to show students to know that there are competing businesses out there that they would have similar skills for. Okay, so kind of going off on a completely different tangent, because Lightcast is such a powerful tool. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how can you use it to demonstrate value to a community. Um, you know, even when we're talking about having discussions with the legislature, you know, how can we use this as a tool to just show them how valuable each institution is? Yes, so Lightcast not only involves what we have access to, those people on your campus that will give the names to you in a little bit, um, but you can actually work with a con consultant at Lightcast, um, an economist whose job is to do a little digging and answer your questions and hopefully get to a solution for you. So when it comes to um, legislation and getting those answers and trying to build evidence and support um, your own institution or your own institution, your own um, higher ed system like NDUS, one thing that could be used is an economic impact study. So an EIS measures the institution's impact on the regional economy and on the workforce as a whole. So it actually calculates the return on investment for students, for taxpayers, and for society. So it really just builds that evidence and that support for your institution. Now, like I said, these are not included in the standard Lightcast package. These are done separately and they do cost extra. So it's anywhere from 15 to $50,000, but you are dealing with a economist whose job is to do this digging and pull these reports and really get down to the answers that you need. Um, so, of course, I unfortunately cannot show you a demo on this, um, but I can show you the analyses you can get from this EIS, this Economic Impact Survey. And if you look at that price and you think it seems high, um, the rep that I talked to said that a lot of times it's not one institution that is going forward with an EIS, it's an entire system. So it might look like the entire NDUS going and getting this EIS completed with a consultant from Lightcast. So the economic impact side is going to show these three items. It's going to show the operation spending impact. So they determine the added net income that's generated in their region as a result of your institution's payroll and its purchases of supplies and services. It's going to show the student spending impact. So they identify how local and non-local students affect your region. They measure the money spent on food, transportation, entertainment, anything that the students are spending money on. The alumni impact, 
They're tallying the impact of your alumni's higher earnings and increased productivity in the regional workforce. And then they also provide this ROI. So the investment analysis is going to give these three um, findings. The student investment analysis, graduates gain a lifetime of higher earnings. They compare the present value of the higher earnings with the cost of their education. They measure the added taxes and public sector savings that the school contributes to the state. And they calculate the added state revenue and social savings that result from the school's presence. So how this works is you work directly with a light cast economist and you give them pretty much all the questions and problems that you want solved. They go in, they find the reports that would be helpful and they try to answer as many of those questions as possible and they put it into this nice organized report for you to share with your stakeholders. An example of this, the Colorado Community College system found that for every dollar spent, Students gained $4.30 in lifetime earnings. Taxpayers gained $5.70 in added taxes and public sector savings. And society gained $11.30 in added state revenue and social savings. So that's for every dollar spent. So you can see how it could be beneficial um, to go forth with one of these EIS, Economic Impact Surveys. So Shannon was kind enough to reach out and find the contacts for your Lightcast analyst users on your own campus. So feel free to take a picture of this screen or to jot down the name and contact information. The only one we're waiting on is Williston State College. Um, theirs is going to be their future VP of Academic Affairs. Um, but otherwise, every one of your campuses has a contact person for this Lightcast. Um, they have access to what I have, and they'd be able to pull these reports for you specifically. Okay. All right. I think that was really helpful. I hope some of you are writing down if you're a life task person, because um, even if you're not a career services director, if you're working in admissions, it would be good to work with your marketing or your career services people to come up with a great marketing campaign to build your programs a little bit, to build up enrollment. Um, also, I think it's really good tool to market to students. You know, if you have parents that are concerned about what kind of job can they get, you can say, well, our institution has this tool, and we use it, we can help our students customize their education, figure out employers, you know, for job placement. I think it's just a nice talking point when you're meeting with those support systems. So thank you very much, Jenna. I appreciate you. all your help. And then um, you want to just welcome Jenna and say thank you. Thank you.